Okay, so um, really today is about giving you time to work, but since I can't resist, I have to show you some of the collaging techniques that we can do in Photoshop. Um, this is a lot of 135 work, but it's kind of customized for the outputs that we have out of Rhino and V-Ray. Uh, I will not be offended if you decide to just work on your renderings all day, but I feel like since this is the last week of class, this is my last chance to show you what you can do if you don't rely 100% on V-Ray. Uh, and I think in reality, in this class, we've spent the, the bulk of our time learning V-Ray and, and relying on V-Ray to do all the rendering stuff for us. Um, in reality, there's some compromise where if we do a little bit of Photoshop work and we do a little bit of V-Ray work, we end up in the right place. Uh, and we save ourselves a bunch of time and we end up having good quality renderings. Uh, so it's not necessary to do everything. So for example, uh, rendering out all the individual blades of grass probably doesn't necessarily have to happen because we can Photoshop them in in you know, way less time than, than actually having to render them out. Um, so I'm going to show you uh, working with a variety of, of rendered images that have already rendered. I'm not going to sit here and make you uh, look at the rendered images, but it's the perspective uh, that I've already uh, kind of established. And actually, I did a, a simplified version of this uh, that I'm going to combine together. It's not even that particularly high of a resolution. Uh, and a couple things that are, are noticed here, I have the water that rendered out fine. But the background, I just rendered as sand. Um, so I just kind of did something to throw in there, and then I'm going to work over the top of it. Uh, but I think it shows the collage uh, pretty nicely. Um, I also did save all the rest of my channels. Remember, we talked about this a little bit before. Uh, and the channels give us some extra information. So this is what's called the alpha channel. It gives us a great view of what the background and what the horizon is with a little bit of the reflection. And all the actual materials are out in white. I'm going to use a lot of these files, these, these channels, uh, after the fact in Photoshop. So here's one with just the background cut out in white. If you've worked in Photoshop at all, this looks an awful lot like a mask. right? That's why it's valuable. I don't have to build the mask. I've rendered, effectively rendered the mask for myself. Uh, there's also another one that's called Z-Depth, which is particularly useful as well. Uh, it's basically it's a gradient um, that shows us what's in the foreground and what's in the background. And we can use that with a, a, a basically a blur to make the background a little bit blurry. Uh, and I'll show you that uh, as well. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up Photoshop. So let's we'll go to Start and Photoshop. And so last class, we worked in Illustrator. Uh, this class, I'm working in Photoshop. When we're, when we're kind of collaging in existing photos, it's always easier to work in Photoshop than in something like Illustrator. If we're working with line drawings, it's easier to work in something like Illustrator rather than Photoshop. So uh, there's definitely uses for either one. So I'm going to go to File and then Open. Uh, and I'm going to open, I hope, that. Original image, so this one. And I'll press Control plus to zoom in a little bit. Actually, that's press Control 0 so we see it all. Uh, so there's my original image. Uh, that's the one I'm going to work with. I'm going to right click where it says background and say layer from background just to unlock uh, the layer so that it's a live layer and I can actually work with it. So now I need to start with, say, something like the grass, right? And so I really I want there to be grass here, not. Um, the, uh, the sandy texture. I want there to be something uh, that looks like grass. And so what I would do is I would go on something like Flickr and I'd search for grass uh, to try to find it. Now I'm going to use a combination of grass. I might use something like this as kind of that background grass, right? So it's far away on a hillside. And you kind of search through. Uh, I actually did a search for Tamales Coast because that's close to where the site was. Uh, but if you do California Coast, you're going to get a bunch of similar uh, results. And so something like this probably wouldn't be too bad. Let me go ahead and click on it. I'll use that for kind of the far away grass. And so I'll go ahead and click on this little download icon, which will let me download the original size. And I'll save that to my flash drive. Let me go ahead and copy it and jump over to my flash drive here. And we'll paste it here. And I also have an image that I've already downloaded that I really like that works really well for kind of the close-in stuff. And it has a couple little rocks, uh, and I kind of like those um, as contrast for what we're doing. 
So I'll go ahead and close that. So I'm going to jump back into Photoshop here, and I'm going to pay attention to a couple things. One, the shadow's kind of going back and to the left, right? If I looked at that grass image here, right, the shadows are going back and to the right, wrong direction. So when I bring that image in to here, I'm going to have to flip it. So I'll go to File and then Place. And I'm going to bring in that first image there. And again, the shadows are the wrong way. So I'll go to Edit, Transform, and I'm going to flip horizontal so that it's going the opposite way. This matches up then with the shadows that I have. And now I need to make it a little bit smaller. So I'll hold down Shift to keep it relatively in proportion. Right? And I'm looking for this to kind of fill in this particular section. Right, something like that. I'll go ahead and say OK for right now. It's OK that it's being cut off a little bit uh, because I'm going to go ahead and work with this um, a little bit more. So let me go ahead and turn this grass hill layer off. And I want to work just in this section uh, to start. So I'm going to press Control plus to zoom in. And then I'll use a polygonal lasso tool to select the region here that's currently covered by the sand. To make this kind of my active selection. So that is now my active selection. I'm going to go back to the grass, right? And I'll go ahead and click on Add Layer Mask, which is effectively going to cut that piece of grass out uh, of this part of my, my drawing. Okay? Looks like I missed part of the rock. I want that rock back. So I'm going to go with um, my layer mask here, and I'm going to paint in white. And I recognize that this may be beyond some of you um, and your abilities, but hopefully, if you haven't taken 135, I will inspire you to take 135. Right? So I'm going to paint this back in so I can get my rock back. All right, something like that. All right, and then let's flip my foreground and background because I need a little bit less. We'll make that go away. That. And I'll use the bracket key to make my brush a little bit smaller. All right, something like that. Now I need to paint across here as well. So we'll flip. Oops, wrong way. So that this is the edge of my wall. Something like that. Okay, so I'm trying to seat that rock down into the wall a little bit, right? And again, I'm I'm picking a showcase thing like this that might look kind of fun. Okay? So now I need to look more carefully here at um, this edge of the building, and I really want the grass to overlap this building so it doesn't look like that sharp line. So I'll use the clone stamp tool, which is right here, and I'm going to use it with a brush that's called the grass brush, and it kind of looks like three forks here. It's brush number 134. And when I click on that, I have to adjust the size of the brush a little bit so that we can see it there. Uh, and what it does is when I copy, I'll hold down Alt and then click. That's going to copy from that location. Ooh, definitely too big. Back up here a second. Make that grass brush a little smaller. I'm going to hold down Alt and copy from here. And it's going to put grass up over the, the top of my building there a little bit. So we'll cover it up. And again, Alt is what I'm copying from. And we'll kind of cover that up, something like that. Right? Really, we should cover, we should color a little bit lighter up over in there. Yeah, something like that. Right? And if I wanted a few grass pieces to come up in front, right, I could go with a few up in front. Oh, come on. Right? And then you have to be like this. Sorry, hold on one second. Let me back up. Didn't copy the way I wanted it to. I'm on the wrong selection. Yeah, that's fine. So let me press Control-0. And now we see that that grass and that rock have been established in the foreground here. Okay. Uh, in reality, this rock is going to cast a little bit of a shadow on that wall. I haven't dealt with that shadow yet, so we'll, we'll get there. 
But I want to go ahead and collage in the background, uh, the hillside, and that sort of thing. So let me go ahead and go to File, and then Place. And I'm going to bring in that other image that I found, which is right here. Now again, this one's kind of backwards for the way I want it. So I'm going to go to Edit, Transform, and Flip Horizontal. Right? This is looking closer to what I was after. The perspective's off a little bit because I'm looking down instead of looking up, but we'll go with it. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust this opacity temporarily so I can kind of see it behind my image. And then I'm going to skew this so that the hillside more closely matches up with the hillside kind of in the background there. Right? Likewise, we'll make sure it kind of covers up in the foreground down in here, though really we need some more grass down here. So let me go ahead and say OK. And let's adjust that back up so we have the hillside. And let's turn that off. And I'm going to work with the upper part of the hill. So we'll go with the polygonal lasso again, and we'll select this piece. Like that. And then I'll jump back to this. It looks like I'm not quite high enough, but we'll go ahead and cre create the layer mask. And then I'll make a few adjustments here. Oops. Unlock them for a second. Move that up. So we're seeing the, the hill that's up there. Move this over a little bit like that. Yeah, that's pretty good. And so now if I turn on the foreground and I turn on the background, we've got a little bit of an issue with those two overlaps. So let's change the order. Uh, and now I need the grass to kind of cover up because, again, it's meant to be farther away. So let me come back here, clone stamp on this. Kind of cover that up a little bit. And in reality, I probably need to do a little bit of color blending. But you see that I'm already starting to give myself what that background would look like. And yes, this has a path that's going up. But maybe that's a good thing. Okay, I still have to deal with the grass that would be inside these windows. That's going to be a little bit more work. Um, so I'll come back to that. And I really need some more grass that's in the foreground here. So maybe I'll take this same grass image and I'll use it down here. So let me go to File and then Place. And I'll use the grass hill, this one. And remember, I reflected it. So I'll go to flip horizontal. There we go. And I need this to sit down in the foreground, more like that. And I'll go ahead and skew this over a little bit. All right, so let's turn that off. And I'm going to make this little triangular selection there. All right, so I've made that selection. I'll turn this back on and click on my Add Layer Mask, which is going to give me that foreground little bit of grass. Okay, And we'll go ahead and I want to actually combine these two together. So I'll right click and say, oh, I have to rasterize that. This is a smart object. I know I'm dumping a lot on you, but don't worry. Right? I'll help you if you want to do stuff like this. Um, this is a smart object, so I have to rasterize it first. So let me go ahead and. Uh, right click on it, say rasterize, which of course is not available. Me layer, rasterize, smart object. There we go. Now I can apply this mask to the layer. And then we can use the clone stamp again with the grass brush to effectively blur that edge. And let's make a few pieces that are a little bit bigger. All right, so you can see 
that rather than rendering all of those individual blades of grass, it's a whole lot faster to drop in an image and do this kind of collage work on it than to have to render it out. So what, it took me five minutes to, to add in the grass. You know, that kind of thing it can really make a big difference uh, long term. So the next piece is really this background in the water. You know, the water's not bad, but it's not great either. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to go back to um, my original search. Uh, and I, I threw up a bunch of kind of nice coastal things. And what I'm really looking for is I'm looking for, um, I'm not, I don't care so much about the hill, but I like the ocean, I like uh, the rocks, and I want the horizon to be approximately where my horizon is. So this one's not bad. I'll go ahead and click on it and download the original size. And let me go ahead and copy this into my flash drive. All right, there it is. And then I'll go back to Photoshop and I'll go to File and then Place. And I'll drop this image in. Okay. And I want this to end up being approximate. And this is where I was saying I want the horizons to kind of match. Because if they don't, I end up with this part of the sky that's not covered. So we'll try doing a bit of a skew here, because I don't think it'll matter too much. Right? And let me temporarily change this to like a multiply so I can see through it. Right? About like that. Maybe something like that. And then let's change this back to normal, and we can kind of see, OK, I've got ocean. It's, it's a pretty nice looking ocean. I'm going to end up blocking off all this side so that that works. I'm really only after the sky and the ocean and kind of that haze in the background. So I'll go ahead and say OK. And I've now dropped that into place. So now it's where some of those other types um, of images that I've worked with before will be very helpful. So if we look at these other um, rendered outputs, the other channels, and we look at, say, something like the alpha, right? This is going to be really convenient because I can select right, the, the white really easily. I can select the black really easily. So I'm going to work with this to be able to do this kind of a collage. So let me go ahead and open it in this scene. So I'll go to File and then Place, and I'm going to pick the alpha. right there. And so it lines up quite nicely with my drawing. Uh, and I can then work with this alpha to create the mask that's ultimately going to go on this layer. So let me go ahead and select, oops, I'll select the white that's there. And then I'll do a select inverse, which is going to select this background and these windows. Okay, And then what I'll do is I'll jump down to this layer, and I'll say add layer mask to that layer, and we get right the sky coming through. It even comes through the windows there nicely by using that alpha. So it saved me a bunch of time in having to actually create that. It looks like it didn't quite do entirely what I wanted down here, right in my old ocean. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at my other channels and see if there's one that will help us for that part of it. Okay. The render ID might be the best one. right? It's colored regions that allow us to really easily select. So I'll go ahead and place that one in. So let me jump back to Photoshop, and I'll go to File, Place. And I'll pick Rendered ID. And I'll go ahead and click OK. Let me press Control-0. Oops, looks like it was off. There it is. And what this allows me to do is I can magic wand select very easily one of these particular colors. And I'm actually going to add that little piece in. And then we'll jump back to this mask. Turn this off. And I'm going to paint a really lousy job of lining up there. Hold on a second. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't line this all the way up to the top. It's my mistake. There it is. Now we can select this and this. Turn it off. And then I'll paint with white. 
on my mask here, oops, black, paint with black, make that brush bigger, All right? And I can allow the ocean to shine through. So I've just changed the rendered background for a real live ocean photograph, right? Which really helps a lot, um, much easier than trying to render. No matter how much we, we can approximate what the ocean looks like, this always looks a little bit better. Right, so now I have that uh, in its place. Notice that the background, because I used the alpha, included this part of the sky, but it also included all of these, right? That little sliver that goes through the windows. So this, it's subtle things that, that can really help from doing something like that. So the last piece was that I really needed to deal with this part of the hillside, which may in fact be some kind of a, a weird artifact that I corrected afterward, because this is an old image. Um, but it needs some kind of a, a on it um, for lack of something better. So I'm going to jump to that material ID again. Uh, looks like that's blocked. So we'll have to do this the old-fashioned way. Uh, I'll use the polygonal lasso, and I'm going to make some selections. I'll hold down the shift key to add to the selection. I know this takes a while, but if I'm going to do it, I have to be patient and get through it. Almost there. And sometimes it's faster to do your selections with a larger area and then subtract out other pieces. All right, so I have that selection made now. Uh, now it's a matter of placing in another object, so I can go to File and then Place. And I'm going to use the same grass hill that I used earlier, right there. But we're going to go to Flip Horizontal, something like that. We'll say OK. Uh, of course, I lost my selection, right? Because you guys wanted to watch me do this again. So nice. Should have made the mask first. with me, I'll get there. No. 
All right, so I've gotten those selected now. I can go back to this layer, and I can go ahead and click on the Add Layer Mask, right, which is then going to crop that part so that we can see that part through the hill. Uh, again, not quite sure why the hills don't line up quite correctly, but that's uh, an error in the rendering, not uh, in this collaging. I am going to drop the opacity slightly so it's not quite so strong, uh, simply because it's seeing through these windows rather than being straight uh, into the background. So let me go ahead and press Control-0, maybe, Control-0, so we can see through. And we now see that I have this kind of collaged rather nicely. Okay. Uh, in reality, I could spend a little bit more time with some of it. But I do want to show you putting in a person, because I think putting in people is, is important. So I'm going to go ahead and go to File and then Place, although I need to have a person first. I have one from my class earlier today. Uh, but if you go to the Digital Tools site, let me back up a couple here. Under Resources, Collage Images, right? you can look for uh, people. And so if I was looking here, right, the one I picked was, uh, was the, I think it was the old guy. I don't remember where he went. No. It was one. It was an old person with a cane. I don't remember exactly which one it was, but whatever, right? So let me jump back to Photoshop, and I'm going to go to File and then Place, and I'm going to drop that person in. And I'll go ahead and click Place. And so here's the person, right? I'll go ahead and say OK, but I need to adjust the size, because obviously he's way too big. Uh, so let me go to um, my Edit, Free Transform. And I'm going to hold down Shift as I make this person smaller. And kind of one of the critical things is getting the person to, to fit right at the right scale, right? Obviously, there would be too small, right? But you want kind of, yeah, right about there is probably about the right scale. But it also depends on how far back he is. So if he was right there standing at the rail, right, not too bad, maybe a little bit less, something like that. Yeah, OK, that'll work. So I'll go ahead and say OK. And so now I've placed him into the scene, which always helps to have a person in the scene. Okay. There's a couple things, however, that I need to do. right? One is that there's a piece of glass in front of him, because I have these glass railings. So there needs to be some kind of a distortion that happens through the glass. So I need to mimic that part. Uh, so I'll go ahead and do a quick right, polygonal lasso to select this piece of glass that goes across there. Right, so I have that little piece of glass. And I want to apply. Um, a um, adjustment layer. So let me go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer. And we'll do a Hue and Saturation adjustment. Right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to desaturate the pants so we can kind of see it a little bit better. Right? Maybe something like that. That helps it uh, to come through a little bit. I may need to adjust the other panes of glass to match. Uh, but you get the idea where I'm trying to show that something's slightly different. The other part of this is he doesn't have any sort of a shadow uh, to make him feel grounded. Uh, so I need to add a little bit of a shadow for him uh, to make him not be floating. So I'll go ahead and go back to my man. And I'll select with the magic wand everything but him. So I click on the outside of him. Then I'll go to Select Inverse. So I have just him selected. And on a new layer, I'm going to go ahead and paint in black his shadow. So I'll use the paintbrush, and we'll paint that in as a shadow. Okay. So there's his shadow. Uh, probably be helpful if the shadow was behind him. Okay. But I need it to be down on the ground in about the same orientation as the existing shadow. So I'm going to use what's called a skew. So I'll go to Transform and then Skew. And I'm going to adjust his shadow down, and then back. Right, that has to come from there, and his feet have to be the same there. 
Oops. Just stop moving. There we go. Right, it needs to be a little shorter, something about like that. Something about like that. A little less. And I'll go ahead and say OK. And so now he has a shadow that's, that's on the ground, which is what I want. But I need to see a little bit of, of the brick through that shadow. So I'm going to change this blending mode to be multiply, which is going to allow a little bit to go through. And the opacity is probably a little strong, so we need it to match up with the shadows elsewhere. Right? So I change and I add that little bit of shadow, and it's amazing how much he then feels like he's part of the scene as if he was rendered there to begin with. So I press Control-0. Oops. We can now see that he's standing in the scene, and he's got that little bit of a shadow that ties him into the rest of the scene as well. Right? I told you that this rock needed to cast a shadow as well. So this one's a little bit more complicated. Right? But we'll do the same sort of thing. Right? So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just on a new layer, right, which is right there, I'll go ahead and use my paintbrush with black. Right? The shadow being cast is going to cast primarily right there. Ish. Okay, so then let me go ahead and go to my multiply. And let me adjust this down so it's just a faint shadow. Uh, and then I need to do a little bit of masking on that layer so that it's only applying on the concrete there. So let's on there, let me paint with black so that it's not applying there on those lights, but it is applying right there. So it's a subtle thing, but it helps to kind of ground all of this into the scene. Okay, so that was probably a lot for you to take in. Um, there is a lot more to be done if I wanted it to. The one last thing that I'm going to show you is something called Z depth, which is it, which is very useful if you want to make a photo, make your rendering look a little bit more like a photo. Um, and I'm going to temporarily I'm going to turn everything off except for my original image, so you can see this a little bit better. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a duplicate of this image. right? And actually, let me just open it as a fresh image so that you can hopefully see this better. Oops. It's going to make me save this first, sorry. All right, so here it is. And I'm going to go ahead and go um, into, let me duplicate this layer. So I'm going to right click and say duplicate layer. This is, by the way, I should pull this up. There is a tutorial for, that walks through this. It's under Photoshop. It's the last one, 1.25 for Z-depth. And so if, if what I went through, you get a little bit lost. Um, this is what you're going to um, going to walk through. So I'm going to go ahead and jump back to Photoshop, and I have that duplicate layer. I'm going to go ahead and create a layer mask for that layer, and my goal is to place right the blurred image, the the Z depth um, channel uh, into this. So if I go um, to my um, channels, this little channels window. Right, you'll see that I have something called background copy, and it's white. This here is where I want to paste. So I'm going to make sure that this is highlighted, and I'll go to File, and then Place, and I'm going to drop that Z depth in right there, which it didn't drop the way it was supposed to. How oh, nice. Right, so I'm going to have to open that separately, and then copy and paste it in. So I'm going to press Control All, Control C. And then I'll go back to this view. I'll go to my channels, and I'll paste it right here. There it is. And so we see it kind of highlighted as that reddish color. right? Uh, that's going to be working as my Z depth. So if I go back to there, we see that it's been pasted right here. And what I'll do is I'm going to use a filter, and I'll go to Blur. And I'm going to do what's called a Lens Blur. And my source is going to be that layer mask. Right? 
Let me make sure. I just want to double check that it is a lens blur. Yeah, it is a lens blur. Um, jump back. So that should be layer mask. Um, let me move some stuff around. Right now, where I pick is it's gonna. I don't even know if you guys can see this. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. Let me go back to here. Let me try that one more time and see if you guys can see it. All right, what it does is it will blur out. See, if I click in the foreground, the foreground is in focus. But if I click in the background, it blurs out the foreground and keeps the background in focus. Can you guys kind of see how that works? So depending on where I pick, it's going to create a very thin field depth, what's called the depth of field, to mimic what a camera would look like. Okay? So as I pick and I get closer, right, more and more of my actual image gets in focus until I get to the front, which is obviously that's what I want my, my uh, depth of field to be, which is in focus. But it means that the background right there is all blurred out. Okay? Now, unfortunately, the mask here didn't do a particularly good job of rendering. So there it is. Really, I need more than just this. I need it to go in the opposite direction. So the z-depth rendering didn't do a good job on the sky, so I'm not getting a blur out of the sky. So I really need to work on that. I will uh, pause the recording for a little bit. I'll update that so that you guys can see a better version of it. Uh, hopefully it'll be more clear, and then we'll apply it to the the final collaged one, so you can see kind of how that works. Okay. Okay. So I went ahead and I fixed that. Um, for whatever reason, it didn't give me the upper half of the gradient uh, in the sky, so I just copied the gradient that is in the lower part up into the upper part into the sky, uh, and I, I purposely didn't select any part of my building because I don't want any of that. I want all of that to be in focus. So I'm just working with the back. Um, and so when I jump back to this view, right, I've gone ahead and I've gone back to my channel and I've copied and pasted it into this background channel um, so that it's there on my mask. Now when I go to uh, filter, blur, lens blur, oops, I have to, sorry, I have to be on the photo. And let me press Control-0 so that hopefully you can see it a little bit better. And let me go to Filter, Blur, Lens Blur. Right Now, where I click in that gradient is going to control what part of it is in focus. So right there, the horizon's in focus. But as I move forward in that, the, the razor-thin section that's in focus is changing. If I click on the building itself, that will be in focus. But the background right, right there is going to be out of focus. Okay, so. If I jump all the way back, let me go ahead and say cancel for right now. If I jump all the way back to my collaged image, now let's turn things back on there, including my grass. So we're here at this image. I'll go to File and then Save for Web. And I'm doing this right now so that I can work with a JPEG that has everything combined together on it. Uh, and so we'll go ahead and click on Save. And we'll call this uh, almost done, for lack of something better. All right, and then I'll go ahead and go to File and then Open. And I'm going to open that almost done. There it is. And it, so from here, I'm going to do the same thing. So I'll right click and say Duplicate Layer. I'll say OK. I'll create a mask on that layer. There it is. Clicking on the mask. I'll then click to my channels, and I'm going to copy and paste that from this file right here. So Control A for everything, Control C to copy, and we'll jump back to my almost done, and I'm going to Control V into this space. So I'll press Control V. There it is. Oops, how nice. It doesn't do what it's supposed to do. There it is. So we see that little bit of a mask there in, in the pinkish color, right? So from here, I can go ahead. And I can go on this up to my filter, 
blur lens blur. And I can blur out that, and you can kind of see it there. Um, if I were closer, you can see how it kind of approximates. If I'm back here, it blurs out. Let me zoom in a little bit. Blurs out my foreground, you can't see anything. But as that means the background there, and you can kind of see like right there is in focus, but this isn't in focus, nor is the background. See that depth of field? And as I move forward, if I click all the way in the foreground, this will be in focus, but everything in the background has gone out of focus, which is the idea. right? So we're making it look a little bit more like a photograph. Um, in reality, I should do a little bit more with the lens blur up here uh, in that background piece of hill, um, which, I, which I will do uh, in the final example. But uh, this, this at least gets you the bulk of the way there. Okay? So hopefully this inspires you to take 135 if you haven't already, not to advertise for my own class or anything. But um, at the same time, I, I, I hope that you see that there's a lot of potential in doing a combination uh, of this with Photoshop, uh, uh, with Rhino and Photoshop. The other thing that I should point out is that you can use your live lines, right? You could use this behind this perspective version. If you, if you exported your Make 2Ds into Illustrator, you did this collage work, drop this behind your live lines, and it can be a hybrid of a drawing and a rendering that can turn out really, really nice. Okay? So I'll stop talking and let you spend your time rendering. Um, I made everybody in the first class be very respectful of any signs that said I'm rendering on this computer. I will continue to do my best uh, to reinforce that. I can't make promises when it's not when I'm not in the room, but I'll try my best.